Hello friends from a rainy and humid Manila where over 70 participants from over 20 countries have gathered for the first international solidarity conference on the rights of climate migrants organized by Rosa Luxemburg uh, St uh, Stiftung Foundation right now we are in conversation with Dr e Fleda Batista convener of People Search Philippines welcome Elfleda Elfleda what uh, is meant by people search yeah it was it really just came out from, from you know from from an inspiration you know knowing that uh, uh, it was a terrible experience for us and when you say storm surge it, it surges you know it has really dis destroyed you know the whole the whole thing uh, it's a it storm is. surge this is um, just a moment this uh, uh, the people surge was established after what after yeah. after yeah people surge was established it's, it, we even say it's it's born out of haiyan you know because haiyan uh, was really uh, storm surges coming in and it made the whole tacloban city just like a washing machine you know with uh, uh, seven feet uh, you know or seven meters high of water Uh, submerging uh, houses, uh, two floors of houses. So um, when we came together, um, you know, survivors came together. We looked for for people, different sectors who who survive, and we came in and convened. And just it was just uh, you know an inspiration maybe that that uh, dawned to us to call the group people surge. So it's not the, the tide that will surge, but it's going to be people who will surge forward. You know. And at, at the start, our demands were really those, uh, those uh, what we needed, food, you know, shelter and, and health, you know, for, for the people, uh, water, you know, anything, the basic needs that we needed, you know, which we demanded from the government. Because we knew that there were a lot of donations coming in, pouring in from all corners of the world, you know, and so, uh, and, and most of us were really coming from the, already uh, how do you call this marginalized communities which were not who were not reached by any uh, relief services you know so we came together farmers fisher folks you know students you know even teachers lawyers n nuns no mm -hmm. our first uh, chairman was a nun okay. you know sister edith s Lepore. but uh, she i took over later on she had to concentrate on her you know Uh, mission also in the church, so that's how people search came about. You have been talking of nuns, so I was taught by Irish nuns, mm -hmm. and I owe a lot to them. Yeah, um, yeah. and I have taught also um, in a convent run by Irish nuns, mm -hmm. so a lot of my values I owe to them. Um, Elfleda, you have been working with survivors of natural disasters for such a long time. Uh, not only Haiyan but others also. Is climate migration abetted by the failure or non-existence of disaster management systems at country local level? Yeah, it appears so because um, you know Haiyan is of course a, 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 an impact of climate, you know, climate change, and uh, many of them lost their families. You know, really, with 30,000 dead, you know, and there were cases where you only had one survivor among the clans, you know, clans or families. So they had nowhere to go but somewhere where they find a relative, at least a relative. And even in our, in our case, you no, know, at the time we are, we are a tribe of 12 clans, you know, 12 families. I brought 12 brothers and sisters. And immediately my sister wanted us to evacuate two. To, uh, to Luzon, to Batangas. See, that's an, it's, it's a reaction, you know, of people really to go out, especially at the time when there was really nothing, no electricity, it, is, it was all dark, you know, and all the dead were spread, you know, in, on the streets, you know, how many days? And so it was terrible, so dark, and so, you know, it was all death around us. So the, the impact there is the, the automatic, you know, running away from the situation. But uh, other reasons why people don't come back anymore, they go, they go somewhere else. Oh, by the way, because my, half of my, my clan, no, my tribe is in Canada, okay. they also plan that we migrate to Canada. 
you know, all of us had uh, a passport made and all applications because we heard that uh, Canada was going to, uh, you know, accept mm -hmm. uh, okay. relatives of migrants there. Mm -hmm. But in the end, it was, uh, you know, not accepted. It was not allowed. So we just wasted all the applications of passport mm -hmm. and all the NBI clearance and everything, all preparations. So that was the, you know, if you say that climate in particular forces immigration, situations where there are possibilities, you know, for people to be there, but uh, uh, migration would be only inter-island, like if you have families or relatives in other provinces or other regions in the Philippines, they go there, okay? So, but um, like businessmen who have, you know, had all their their means destroyed. Mm -hmm. They just sold their you know their uh, stores or department stores and they left. And so the the big capitalists come in and they built these big big malls. So that's the, the case in Tacloban. Uh, uh, what is the situation of climate migrants in your country, which is prone to so much of weather vagaries and? Uh, typhoons and maybe other countries like Philippines also. Uh, so, um, means is the, again I'm talking of disaster management preparedness at the level of gov governance, uh, country, local level. Uh, what is the situation? There are no provisions for what we call climate migrants from the government. No, what we have, what we have is what is already existing these uh, overseas Filipino workers. Mm -hmm. So they are not necessarily, maybe they were victims of Yolanda or survivors of Yolanda, but uh, the fact that after Yolanda there was really nothing, you know, the economy really went down and there was no job, you know, for, for the survivors. Even now that they are transferred to their uh, new houses, you know, housing units, there's no work there. So they still have to go back to the sea and fish. You know, most of the coastal areas, uh, communities were really declared as no build zone. So they had to be, you know, uh, driven away, I should say, you know, from the place to higher levels, which there are no provisions. There were no provisions at the start. In fact, they, they stayed in the tent for how many months, even a year. And then they went to the bunkhouse because there was no place really for, for the government to, to, to build these housing projects for the survivors. So it took years, no? Two years before they have been transferring from one place to another until they are now in their, their houses. But they cannot stay there because no electricity, they have to buy their drinking water, you know, and they have to go back to, to their livelihood, and children have to go to school also. So it was really a, we even term it as Yolandizing every day. <laughs> you are having all, this weather is still there, but economically, psychologically, and, you know, uh, you know, physically. Mm. So what, according to you, are the actions which can better prepare uh, to deal with such situations could be floods, droughts, hurricanes, typhoons. What actions are lacking? In yeah, um, of course the government has implemented some plans for, for uh, you call this uh, disaster management or uh, how do you call that? Uh, preparation, preparedness, preparedness. Pre disaster preparedness. Uh, we are at link with some NGOs that provide that, but these are for the you know far flung barriers that we cannot reach. But as members of People Search, we were trying, you no, know, trying really, for this uh, our members to uh, to undergo this process. But the thing is, we don't really have staff and all the you know all the necessary. Um, human resources to, un, uh, to to implement this. So what we just uh, propose is they join what the government is doing already. Mm -hmm. uh, we we are still planning, you know, to really uh, go barangay by barangay or village, you know, and and, and teach them. Uh, in fact, I, I I focused on one of the provinces in Biliran almost the whole year I was there, and I was uh, municipal hopping. Mm -hmm. It was what I was trying to, to emphasize in them, that they really have to be prepared, you know, because disasters are just coming every day, almost every day. 
but you know you have to follow them up and you really have to have a staff mm-hmm. to, to, to do that yeah mm-hmm. so we are still in that process mm-hmm. and um, even now that it has been raining in in, in the in region in, in the region itself there had been landslides and floodings you know and they just don't know yet what to do because they have not been trained you know and uh, we try to um, to to teach them like even before the the flood uh, whoever are the leaders in the baranga you try to to uh, how do you call that uh, map map your village and identify the people there and you document any disaster that's coming because even for the sake only of the calamity fund that you can get afterwards you know mm-hmm. so the, the the case will not be repeated like in the yolanda uh, situation where um, those who were affected could not get, get any aid, but it was others, especially those connected with the government, you know, cousins and relatives, they were the ones who got the house, for example. They, did, they were not affected, they came from different municipalities and then they have a house. You know, politics came in, corruption came in. You know? So it's, it's one thing that we are trying to develop among our members you know, itself, that they, they know also, they have their own government. Let's say it's, it's a government that they should really run, you know in this particular case of environment protection and uh, uh, disaster preparedness. We are still in the process, but uh, uh, one thing also we tried to, to do last year was to join in the political race as a party list. Okay. We, we applied as a party list, but knowing that we were linked with the progressive groups, you know, mm-hmm. very easily they look for you know loopholes mm-hmm. in we were not able to come in mm-hmm. even at the last minute we were still hoping because there was already our number mm-hmm. in the ballot okay. but in the end there's nothing you know okay but uh, that's a good beginning i think yeah. to uh, we to uh, continue uh, right. next election, right. we will right. try so that we will have a, a representation of disaster survivors in the congress that, that, that's that's yeah. the right move also yeah. uh, anything else you would like to share in the context of climate migration anything? um you know i i think it should be everyone's concern you know disasters and and climate change and it uh, it's, it will still take a lot of, of time and effort really to to share these ideas with those who are in the government mm. because this is politics, you know, and many of them really, we know that they are there for, not for the interests of the, <laughs> the constituents yeah. of the people. So for me, it's still a challenge for us really to, 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 to go near them and maybe share some ideas and if maybe if we can get some or a few who are open to this, maybe we, we can work it out. So in, in, in any case, in cases where disaster ha- happen, you know, we can link with them and maybe make it easier for the survivors to really move on, move anywhere they could be, you know, and live, uh, you, know, uh, you know, peacefully uh, with sustainable uh, life there, you know. It, but it's still, again, it's still a long time. But that should be uh, one one objective that we work with this government, get people who are really uh, aware of this and maybe share with this advocacy with us. Uh, thank you, Elfleda. Friends, we were listening to Elfleda Batista, convener of People Search Philippines, on site from the first International Solidarity Conference on the Rights of Climate Migrants. This conference is being live streamed on www.climatemigrationforum.net or be welcome to follow hashtags uh, beyond labels, beyond borders or climate migrations, uh, climate migrants rights now. Bye till we meet next.